Here we have the ScanWatch by Withings. Now, it took them long enough to get it to the US market, but alas, they finally have. And I wasn't a big fan of the Steel HR, but this is their latest flagship product, and it's got some new features, some slightly new design to it. And what we want to find out today, really, is if this thing is an improvement, if it's any good, and if you should buy one yourself. Now, ultimately, I really do like this scan watch. There's a lot of things to like about it, but there are a few nitpicky things that I don't particularly care for either. Number one on the pro list is when you unbox it, and we did a little unboxing video, but when you unbox it, you're given this little pouch that they put the watch and the charger in, and we kind of thought this was a cute touch. You can sort of use this thing when you're traveling to not only put your watch in, but other sort of like charging cables and things like that. So that was a kind of nice thing. But when you pull the watch out, what you're presented with is ultimately a very, very beautiful watch. It is kind of simple and it's sort of minimalistic and no, I don't think it's as good looking as the Polar Grit X Pro, but what you have is just sort of something that's pretty handsome that you could easily take to the boardroom, but then also go outside and jog with it as well. It's kind of a unique approach to the smartwatch, if you will, and we think that Withings did a pretty decent job coming up with something sort of fresh and new and not copycatting the Apple Watch. It also has this beautiful stainless steel frame on it, and for that matter, it has sapphire crystal glass, which is scratch resistant and quite a bit more durable. Now there is one particularly weird thing about the sapphire glass on this watch, and that is that they chose, I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but they chose to make it a bubble instead of making it flat. And we're not really sure why they chose to do that, but why we don't particularly care for it is because in very, very bright sunny days, that bubble does allow for a little bit of reflection. We feel like that could have been solved if you had a flat piece of glass on there. Um, also, we don't really particularly love the bubble look, so we sort of wish that they went with a flat piece of glass, but they didn't. They went with the bubble, but still, it is just a very, very handsome watch. Next on the Pro List is its overall looks. It's a very classic looking watch, and what they've done is they've designed just sort of a general analog watch interface with two big dials on the front of it, the top dial being the LCD screen that you sort of interact with it as the smart features, and then the bottom dial being your sort of move goal. Now, it's more of a pedometer than anything else, and I'm going to get into that in the cons list, but nevertheless, you've just got sort of a nice, sort of timeless timepiece that's just sitting on your wrist, and we think they did a very, very nice job with the design. It's easier to read, it's easier to interact with than the Steel HR, and overall, we feel people are going to have a good user interface experience with this watch. It has a haptic feedback when you move the crown. So if you're like in the menu or trying to select something, uh, it gives you a nice little buzz on your wrist, and that's a very, very nice touch. They've also made the LCD screen at the top bigger than what it was on the Steel HR, and for that matter, it's a little bit more responsive and a little bit more fluid. So overall, the ScanWatch is just a big improvement over the Steel HR. Next up on the pro list are its features. It has sleep tracking, it has SpO2, it's got a heart rate monitor. Now, funny enough, those features that are on the pros list are also on the cons list, and I will get to that momentarily. It also has phone notifications. So that way, if you um, you can select either maps, email, messages, phone calls, whatever it is, now you, uh, and, and, and it will mirror the notifications from your phone to your watch, and it does a really, really good job at that. So for example, if you get a text message, basically it will then show up on that little top screen and it will kind of scroll through the text. And we found that it is in fact pretty decent to use. Another thing on our pros list is the crown. It is a nice big crown and it's smooth to operate and it acts also as a button with both long presses and short presses, depending on kind of what you want to do. Uh, but one thing we were really impressed with with the crown is, and again, also the interaction with the crown has the haptic feedback. But one thing we were impressed with is when you are working out with certain smartwatches, it tends to be that when you're like either doing push-ups or weights or just something where your wrist is kind of like cocked back a little bit, you'll tend to interact with the buttons on the watch accidentally. And we have found that that just does not happen with the scan watch for whatever reason. We're not really sure what it is about the shape or size, but you never really accidentally hit the buttons on that. So when you're in the middle of a workout, it's not pausing on you for no reason at all. And it's just, um, I don't know, it, there, there's no accidental input. And that was kind of a clever thing. I don't, I don't think with things, uh, achieved that on purpose, but they did it accidentally. And overall, uh, when you're working out with this thing, it just does a good job sort of disappearing on your wrist. It's not too heavy. It sort of just, just exists there and sort of does its thing. So again, you've got a watch that has great design, it's handsome looking, it's classic, it's timeless, and it's got a lot of features 
on it. It's got, it's quick, it's snappy. Uh, again, plenty and plenty of things to like about it. But now let's go ahead and dive into the cons list because there are a couple of things that may be deal breakers for some people. First things first on the cons list is the timer. Now a countdown timer is a feature that I must have on my watches. I love having a countdown timer for when I'm cooking and I need to just you know, figure out when I need to flip that steak. I also love a countdown timer for when I am working out and doing interval training. It's nice to be able to just set something for like, let's say 20 seconds, have a countdown, and then um, alert me when, I'm, when I can stop running. That said, the countdown timer on the scan watch is a little bit strange. So it's pretty easy to get to, and for that matter, it's also pretty clever and intuitive on how you set it. Basically, you start by pressing the crown, go over to the clock option, press it, and then you go over to the timer option. Now, when you select that, you can then move the crown in order to go in 10 second increments uh, for your countdown timer. So basically, if you wanted like three minutes, you would just kind of keep on you know, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling until you hit three minutes and 10 second uh, intervals. Now, where it becomes a little bit disappointing, however, is let's say you, you uh, start a timer for 10 seconds and it counts all the way down to 10 and then hits zero. It will indicate on your wrist that, you know, sort of buzzing at you and give you a little, little bit of feedback, letting you know that the timer is finished. But all of a sudden, then it's just done. You cannot restart the timer. It takes you all the way back to zero where you then have to press the crown, go back to clocks, go back to countdown timer and set another one. Now that is something that is easily solvable with a firmware update uh, of, of some kind. However, and actually we'll get into that in a minute. We don't really trust where things will ever do anything with software. But that said, that is something that is solvable with a uh, software upgrade. But it is definitely a deal breaker for people that are using this watch specifically for interval training. The timer just sort of dies. Uh, so that is, um, I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker for me, but it may be a deal breaker for some people and it's definitely a big thing on the cons list. The next thing on the cons list are the workouts. Now this one may in fact be a deal breaker for me and I have a feeling it's gonna be a deal breaker for a lot of people. The scan watch, and for that matter, the Steel HR was the same way, but the scan watch only allows you to choose up to five workouts to select on the watch. So for example, when you hit the little crown and you go over to the workouts section on your screen, you are only allowed to have five favorite workouts in that menu. So for example, if you're somebody that does mountain biking, road biking, walking, running, hiking, tennis, swimming, uh, ultimate frisbee, soccer, much like myself, mountain climbing, whatever it is, you will not be able to have all of those things on your watch. It only lets you have five of them. And five is really not that many. And again, this is something very easily solvable from uh, for the scan watch. All they have to do is do some kind of software update that allows you to maybe have like, let's say 10 exercises or even better yet, you could have five favorites, but then you could have sort of like a show more button, you know, like something where um, you only have the five up front, but then you have like a little six option, show me more. And then you can select maybe out of the totality of the exercises that the watch offers. Now the thing is, is that you can go in the HealthMate app and then you can select an actual workout that you wanna do and then record that workout. But that is just not an option for a lot of people. Usually people that are swimming or mountain climbing, whatever it is, they're not gonna to wanna to have to interact with their phone. They wanna be able to select these things on the watch. We really think that this is a pretty big oversight uh, on Withings' behalf. And uh, again, they are not, they don't tend to do firmware updates to these things that, that uh, change or add features. I don't think that we're ever going to get that, but it really would be a simple thing to, to, uh, to change just to allow some more workouts. Uh, but yes, those that are hobbyists or athletic, um, that is going to be something that's going to get quite annoying. The next thing on the cons list is the strap. It is not the most, com it's not the most uncomfortable, but it's not the most comfortable strap in the world. It is a nice durable sort of silicon and they allow you to change color and even strap types and stuff like that. But the one it comes with, at least on this black one uh, or with this black one, has this buckle. And it is sort of this weird dual buckle system where you have to, you know, basically find your notch, uh, kind of like you do with a belt. And then you slide it underneath that top buckle or that bottom buckle part. And then you, of course, have like another secondary buckle that sort of, it, it, whatever the hell they call that thing, to, to, to uh, make sure that it doesn't slip around. And we found that you never really quite can dial in exactly where you want the watch. I mean, it does an overall pretty decent job, but we just kind of found that uh, compared to like, let's say the Apple Watch's uh, wrist and, uh, or uh, band and maybe even some of the offerings from like Polar, it's just not 
quite as good as it could be. Not a, a deal breaker by any means. Again, it's a fine strap. It's just not the best strap and they might need to go back to the drawing board a little bit with that one. That said, you can choose from other straps on the website and switch them out pretty easily. Another con on our list is the Move Goal. Now, I really love it when a smartwatch offers a Move Goal. The Polar Grit X Pro kind of has one, which is pretty nice. And of course, the Apple Watch is infamous for having the Move Goal, but this one has the bottom dial, which is really more of a pedometer goal than it is a Move Goal. So what happens is, is let's say you have your, your, your step tracking set at like 10,000 steps per day. When you hit 5,000 steps uh, throughout your day, it will then be at 50% on the dial, on the bottom dial there. But then of course, when you hit your 10,000, it will then round all the way up to 100%. Now, what I don't like about that is there are a lot of very active people out there, but they're not always walking. Some of their activity is either with climbing, with cycling, with ellipti ellipticals, rowing. I mean, there's a number of different things uh, that, that people do where they get their, their daily move goal. And I kind of feel like uh, Withings should have at least given you an option to have it as like, maybe like a move score or a calorie goal, something like that. Um, again, very easily solvable with a software update, but Withings just doesn't tend to do that kind of thing. A step goal is just not useful for everybody. It is useful for some, but just not everybody. So if you are looking to have a move goal on your watch, this watch is also probably not going to be for you. And that sort of is the given theme with this watch, I think, is that overall, this is a classic smartwatch, but I think it's more, uh, I think it's more useful as like something that you bring into the office and you do the occasional workout with rather than it is a health fitness tracker. But that goes against the principles of what Withings is selling this thing for. They claim that this is a, a medical device, that this thing can take your, you know, an EKG and your heart rate and your SpO2 and give you just this overall picture of what your health status is. But the fact is, is it just does not do that as well as the Apple Watch or for that matter, even the Garmin. So it is sort of stuck in this little bit of this identity crisis. It wants to be a health fitness tracker, but all of the health fitness tracking things that you would want to do with it, such as having multiple workouts, or for that matter, like a move goal or something like that, it just doesn't do that stuff too well. And that leads me into then the final con, which is the accuracy. Now, we're not gonna do a benchmark video on the accuracy here because there's already a few other videos on the internet that do that pretty well, and I'll link to those in the description. Uh, but the accuracy on this thing is a little bit questionable. We found that the heart rate monitor um, at best is maybe right like, I don't know, half the time. It gives you like a fairly decent baseline, I suppose, of where you are. But uh, overall, if you're using this as a wrist-based health rate monitor, you are probably going to want to look elsewhere for that. I don't know. We just feel like they could have done a better job with the, health, uh, with the heart rate monitor. Now, it's interesting to note that on the bottom of the scan watch, it only has like one LED cluster uh, to do the health metrics or the heart rate metrics. Whereas most modern smartwatches have like four LED clusters where they're taking any number of metrics and, and trying to give you a very accurate detail there. I don't know why they chose to go with just one LED cluster. It looks like they could have made room for more, but they just didn't whatever, but accuracy is kind of questionable on this thing. And when you're using this watch as sort of an overall health device, we sort of feel that that was a big oversight. Overall, we are very happy with the ScanWatch. We think that it is a big improvement over the Steel HR, and we think that it does kind of have a purpose in the market. We think that people that buy it will ultimately probably like it, but um, I'm not really sure it's for me. I do think though that other people can have a good experience with it, but if you are somebody that's really, really into health and fitness and working out and you have a lot of hobbies and that kind of thing, Ultimately, the watch is, it's just got too many deal breakers there to, uh, to, to handle that. But if you're somebody that sort of casually, you know, you walk and run every so often, you've just so, kind of have like a, a semi-active lifestyle, but you're mostly in the office or the boardroom uh, rather than out there on the hiking trails kind of deal, then I think the watch is going to be a pretty good option for you. The battery life on it is pretty outstanding. It's got about 30 days. Uh, you, practically speaking, you'll probably get more like about 20 days out of it, but it does come with a little charger and you just sort of snap it directionally into the charger and you know, it takes maybe about an hour to charge the thing up pretty, pretty fast. So again, has a place, it's for certain people, not for athletes, but it's, you know, you know, it's, it's a good watch. We like it. Uh, we would recommend it for those looking for sort of just a classic kind of semi smart watch. And, um, you know, anyway, so that is our opinion of the Withings scan watch. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to reach out to us into the uh, comment section. Please like and subscribe. Please tell your friends. And we hope, uh, anyway, we hope you enjoyed this video. We will be back with another one really soon.